Welcome to PowerCat Live. I am here with Dave Milton. He is the Global Black Belt Technical Director. Hi, Dave. Hey, Phil. What's going on? Not much. We're going to do, do a little recording today. How about that? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, good idea. Do that. So tell me about the role you're in and kind of your path to this role at Microsoft. Yeah, so the uh, the Power Platform Global Black Belt team, we're, uh, well, actually, we're kind of like the uh, the opening act for PowerCat. Uh, we work <laughs> with customers uh, North and South America for my team. Uh, we're a group of, of technical specialists, pre-sales, uh, and, and we help customers on their Power Platform journey just as they're getting started. So what did you do before getting into this role? Yeah, so actually, I, I came from the Dynamics Global Black Belt team prior to this. And then before joining cool. Microsoft, I actually spent about 15 years uh, in the partner channel. So uh, working for an ISV where I, I built solutions on what eventually became Power Platform, but we, I guess yeah. we used to call XRM back in the day. Uh, you know, both of us in our jobs, we talk to a lot of professional developers, right? Pro devs and talk to them about building on a platform. And sometimes we get mixed reactions, right? And you've experienced this yourself going on that journey from pro dev to power platform. So what's that journey like having gone through it, gone through it? Yeah, a long time ago, I, I started on this journey. And, and so even, you know, rewinding further back, I was a pro developer, full stack building web applications, front end, back end. Yeah. And what I found is when low code was first introduced to me uh, all the way back then, uh, I, I went through kind of the, the same sorts of things that you experience in your life with loss, like the, the stages of grief. And, and you actually experience these things, uh, you know, not only in, in your personal life with, with you know, serious loss or change, uh, but also in your professional life. I found myself going through these stages as well in, in that I started with shock of this, this can't possibly be happening right. and, and denial of there's no way this is going to work. And, you know, eventually you, you hit the depths of, of frustration and depression where, you know, there's just, there's no way that this can possibly be better than what I was doing before. And, and only after a period of experimentation uh, and, and finally just deciding and committing uh, to giving this a try, uh, did I then eventually launch the rest of my career, which, which involves uh, low code ever since about 2006. Got some time. Um, and and so yeah. yeah, it's it's been a long time, but I, I find myself you know happier than I than I've ever been, uh, and and very grateful for having gone through the experience. And now this is your job, so you're maybe slightly biased, and <laughs> we and we've all seen charts like that, you know, that show those stages. I mean, what leads to that? Like, why in this case does it lead to that upswing in morale and competence? Yeah, I, I think it, it it generally comes down to just the burden of what you're dealing with. And, and, and we call this in, in a fancy marketing term, technical debt. But if you, if you think about, it, and I've tried to model out my career in at least a, you know, phases of it <laughs> where, you know, anytime I would start a new project, it was all new, creative, fun things. You're learning new technologies and you're, you're deploying new capability. And so that, that act of creation, uh, yeah, I think for a lot of developers, actually for a lot of people in general, creation brings a lot of joy. And so you, right. you have high job satisfaction. But the problem is, you know, like with anything, the the second you begin something, you're starting to make mistakes. And in year two, or maybe it's month two or whatever the time scale is in your case, uh, you end up having to go back and fix the mistakes that you made the first time around. And over and over, what, what ends up happening is over time you end up spending more time doing maintenance than you do building new mm. things. And so that joy slowly slips away and you find yourself in a position where, yeah, you're, you're basically now, uh, you know, fixing all of the things that you didn't know, you didn't know, you know, back, back in year one. So I, I think this drives uh, a, a lot of the, the reason people maybe get unhappy with their jobs, but, but also gives us an opportunity with low code to lower this technical debt without just having to throw more people or more resources at the problem. And so how does having a platform then change the dynamics of that? Yeah, well, you know, like I said, the, the challenge with technical debt is that, you know, if, if we just keep throwing more people at the problem, we're really only having a linear effect. The more people we have, you know, it's just mm -hmm. that much more technical debt that we end up incurring. What we need to do is, is take a look at the, the way that we're working. And so what, what I like to do is, is try to think of things in a, a, a balance of control and responsibility. And if you look at the applications or the workflows, the things that you've basically built over time, and I look at, at any organization that, that I might work with, uh, you know, they might choose for a particular type of capability they need to go buy a packaged app. And that's great because if it does what they need it to do, they effectively don't have any responsibility for it, right? The vendor builds that app, they build the features. If there's a bug, 
they fix the bug. Uh, but you don't have any control over that. So as a professional developer, you, you generally resist that type of purchase because I want control. Um, and so in a lot of cases, if you can't buy something, hmm. uh, organizations will just swing the other way and automatically go to custom development. And so I can have complete control over what a custom develop project looks like, what it feels like, what it does. Um, but unknowingly sometimes, or maybe unconsciously, what we're also doing is taking on a ton of responsibility. So now, now I've got to make sure that if this thing breaks, I've, I've got to fix it. If it needs new features, that's me. Um, so by taking on all of this control, we're also taking on too much responsibility. That's what's driving that technical debt chart that we saw before is it's not just technical debt. It's, it's the responsibility chart. I'm taking on too much responsibility. And, and when we start to look at power apps, what we're able to do is without giving up all control, um, we can give up control of the things that we don't need control over. And by doing so, we're also giving up some of that responsibility, right? And, and by giving up responsibility, now I'm freeing up my time and effort and energy to work on new and exciting things. So this is a, a way to think about if you look at your workload and your career, what, what you're working on, you know, how can I lower my responsibility but not give up too much control? And, and that's where Power Apps and Power Platform in general really give you a, a fantastic balance. So the pro developer deep down inside of you from however many years ago, the would be saying right now, but doesn't that also constrain what I can build, right? All of these controls are going to also limit then what I can actually ultimately create. Yeah, well, that, that guy had a lot of poor taste as well. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, if, if I was to argue with that that old Dave Milton from, from years ago, Man, what guy. I've come to realize is that, yes, you can make an argument that if I, if I am going further down the path towards a packaged app, I'm adding more structure and adding that structure is limiting or lowering my creativity, right? Like you're boxing me in, you're putting limitations around what I can do. Um, but, but I don't actually think that, that this holds weight. And you know, I've learned this actually outside of my career and in, in other ventures that, you know, structure actually frees creativity. Uh, and, and this isn't something, you know, that you have in just the, the technical world. I mean, we see this all the time in things like improv comedy. Uh, if you look at Whose Line Is It Anyway, which is a fantastic show, if you haven't seen it, you know, the, these folks, they get up on stage and they don't just start saying funny stuff. I mean, they're given a, a location, they're given a character, they're giving a time period, and then they use that structure to create something hilarious. Right. You could look at this other ways, too. I mean, I, I've used these examples like our, our own alphabet or the, the musical scale or even DNA, where you have you know, a, a fairly limited structure, but using those building blocks, you can create you know, wonderful works of literature or beautiful symphonies or all sorts of exotic uh, animal life. Um, you know, the, the caveat is, of course, like it doesn't guarantee success, right? That structure, while it can free creativity, you know, you could also create things <laughs> on the other end of the spectrum, um, you know, but generally the, the point is that, that, you know, structure in and of itself, uh, I don't think limits you whatsoever. If anything, it's something that you can push off of. It's something that, that, that can help you build momentum. And, and my apologies, Phil, if you have that, that album. Uh, uh, I thought, I thought that was a photo of my bookshelf for a second, but then I realized <laughs> I don't have that bird. So that's how I knew it wasn't. Uh, so so, um, but what about the customers then? We're talking about like what developers can get out of this, but ultimately it comes down to like, what, how do the customers benefit? And the customers do care that the developers are happy, but that's probably not one of their top three concerns. So yeah, how do I, yeah, obviously, yeah, we're, we're not paid in uh, high fives and, uh, and sunshine, but you know, for, <laughs> for an organization, if, if you look at this, yes, obviously we want a happy workforce. Mm -hmm. One of the other things, though, is, is there's a, a ton of benefits for, for your customers or for, you know, for the companies that you work for as well. If you look at traditional development, in a lot of cases, you've got a lot of distributed roles. So you've got your developers building your apps. Maybe you have DBAs who are handling the back end of things. You got network and infrastructure people and QAs, you know, testing folks. And, and so what you end up with is a, a fairly long path to, to building an application. But what you also have is a critical path that includes multiple roles. And each one of those roles adds complexity and possibly risk if there's scheduling conflicts or things come up. When we look at low code, you know, not only can we iterate very quickly, but we can also 
really just streamline the number of roles that we need. So maybe it's a business analyst who's kicking off this app and, and we use professional developers just to add those finishing touches, like a fusion team, right? Where I might have a couple of folks contributing. Uh, what we can do then is end up iterating a lot faster. And so we can have a minimum viable product sooner. And then we can have those iterations add new features and experiment with, you know, with new patterns generally. And so I can get five applications done in the same amount of time and as a project manager, I can have a much more streamlined critical path where we're not as dependent on specialized resources. You know, for the people who end up actually having to use these apps, the other thing that I've seen is you know, the, the fact that proximity breeds empathy. So as a developer, I don't have to spend three months working on the plumbing only to come back and then show something to an end yeah, user who maybe has gotten a new job or things have, you know, <laughs> things, business has changed, right? All of a sudden we, we do yeah. things differently now. Um, and, and so now you can build alongside of users. And, and I found that to be the most rewarding part of it is that they can participate in the solution right. you know, to the extent that they're comfortable. But then what I've built is, is ultimately more useful to the organization and, and has a, a greater impact than it would have had if I had, had been you know, spending three months doing it in a, in a case. Right. And it's what the users built too, right? They've, they've built alongside of you. And so they've, they've got that co-ownership. Yeah, that it's sense of ownership is, is nothing to sleep on. I mean, that, that will yeah. really help uh, the success of your project. So if, uh, if Dave from however many years ago, a lot of years ago, was watching this right now, what would you tell him? Like, what should he do next if he wants to, he wants to dip his toes in this? Yeah, I mean, you know, along with... Uh, uh, you know, a lot of other advice I could give him, I'd say for, <laughs> for right now, <laughs> the one I think I'd focus on is, you know, absolutely jump in. And, and you know, I, I see myself and I look at that, that curve with the stages of grief. And I think, you know, there, there are ways to short circuit that. Right? I mean, certainly having an open mind or a growth mindset or however you want to call it. Mm. Yeah, that, that can absolutely help you skip that gap. Right. So, yeah. Ultimately, we can't ever uh, get rid of shock entirely. Otherwise, life would be boring. But I can skip to the experimentation phase where we're really open-minded and, and start to build things. And, and we have tons of tools in the Power Platform that help you do that. I mean, just look at the community edition. Right. I can go sign up. I can get a developer environment. I can go to learn.microsoft.com and start going through all of the training. And, and you can really, you know, you can short circuit that phase. You don't have to go through the stages of grief like I did. Uh, you really can get straight to the part, straight to the good part, right? Where, where you're building new things and, and you're feeling good about what you're doing. Just make that line go straight up is what you're saying. It's just That's right. Yeah. Dave, thanks for taking the time to talk today. I, I think this the story and how you you know how you've looked at this from the perspective of a pro dev from your own experience is is really compelling and i've seen a lot of this play out in my customers as well okay thanks bill thanks dave